Today's video is about one of the world's most prolific and published writers, Leo Tolstoy. This writer's literary legacy comprised 90 volumes of fiction and nonfiction works, and he was nominated multiple times for the Nobel Prize in Literature and even the Nobel Peace Prize. But the most surprising thing is that the writer's life itself was long and incredibly rich. His life was like an adventure novel. Love, war, major setbacks, politics, travel, and spiritual search were all part of his journey. Welcome to This is Russia. We think you'll enjoy this series of videos covering Russian culture, people, history, and much more. Leo Tolstoy was born on September 9, 1828, in Tula province, about 120 miles south of Moscow, to a large and fairly wealthy noble family. The family estate there was called Yasnya Polyana. Tolstoy was orphaned early, but it is this family estate that is associated with the most important and affectionate memories of Tolstoy's early childhood. These memories are reflected in his first story, entitled Childhood. At the age of 17, Leo Tolstoy began his studies at the prestigious Imperial Kazan University. However, he quickly became disillusioned with his studies. He considered exams of formality and university professors incompetent. Two years later, when he came of age, he took possession of property, including his beloved Yasnya Polyana, and immediately went home without having received a higher education but with the intention of studying independently those subjects that interested him. At home, he undertook the study of languages, history, medicine, mathematics, geography, law, agriculture, and natural sciences. Unfortunately, from time to time, his youth, hot blood, and restless nature prevented him from following a strict schedule, and he spent his days hunting, amusing himself, and playing cards. He was a gambler, but not a successful one. To pay off his gambling debts, Tolstoy decided to join his brother in military service in the Caucasus. There he began his writing career. In July 1852, Tolstoy excitedly sent the first manuscript of his autobiographical novel, Childhood, to a publisher and attached a letter. In it he said, I look forward to your verdict. It will either encourage me to continue my favorite activities or make me burn everything I started. The story pleased the editor and was soon published. It was a success. After publication, the author immediately began to be counted among the luminaries of the young writers, along with Turgenev, Goncharov, and Ostrovsky, who were already enjoying great literary fame. At the end of 1854, Tolstoy, with the rank of a junior officer, arrived in Sevastopol, the epicenter of the Crimean War of 1853 to 1856. In one of the battles, he was almost killed by a ball that hit the wheel of a cannon that he was aiming. He was entitled to the St. George's Cross for courage in battle, but in accordance with his beliefs, conceded it to a fellow soldier, considering that rewarding the service of a common soldier was above personal vanity. While in the thick of the Crimean conflict, he created the story Sevastopol in the month of December. Although Tolstoy was unusually frank about battle scenes, this first Sevastopol story was deeply patriotic and celebrated the bravery of Russian soldiers. After some time, Tolstoy began working on a second story, Sevastopol in May. However, by that time, little remained of his pride in the Russian army. The horror and shock that Tolstoy experienced on the front line and during the siege of Sevastopol strongly influenced his work. From this point on, he wrote about the senselessness of death and the inhumanity of war. In 1855, Tolstoy finished his military service and decided to become a writer. In search of inspiration, he traveled outside of Russia. He visited Paris, Rome, Berlin, and Dresden, got acquainted with famous works of art, met with artists, 
and noted how people lived in European cities. But the journey did not inspire him. Tolstoy's disappointment was caused by the deep contrast between wealth and poverty which he saw in European cities. In addition, he was present at a guillotining in Paris, and this left a deep impression on him. Returning to his native Yasna Poljana, he continued writing and at about the same time became seriously interested in education. Two years before the abolition of serfdom in Russia, while ordinary peasants were still nearly slaves, not able to educate their children, Tolstoy set up schools in his Yasnia Poljana for poor children. Tolstoy did not like the widespread German standards of education and tried to establish his own style of teaching. Classes were conducted by Tolstoy himself with the help of several teachers. He also published an educational magazine as well as books for school children, including Yazbuka, an alphabet book, along with his own stories and arrangements of folk tales. Some of these are still included in the Russian school curriculum. During this period, the writer had a happy personal life. In 1862, Tolstoy wrote in his diary, I write from the village, I write, and I hear the voice of my wife upstairs, whom I love more than anything in the world. I lived to be 34 years old and did not know that you can love so much and be so happy. The writer lived with Sophia Bears for 48 years. During their marriage, they had 13 children. Sophia became Tolstoy's secretary, copyist, and unofficial editor. During this period of calm, Tolstoy began writing the novel War and Peace, a large-scale epic. The basis for its peaceful domestic scenes was the life of the Tolstoy family, while the writer created battle and other scenes based on the events of Russian history. The main theme of the work was not patriotism, but rather pacifism. The author's strong protest against the horrors of war, expressed earlier in his work Sevastopol sketches, prompted him to describe the negatives of war. War and Peace, published in 1869, was a huge success. Eight years later, Tolstoy completed another world-famous novel, Anna Karenina. By this time, Tolstoy was considered one of the greatest Russian writers, but he was not at ease with himself. The nobleman and landowner were concerned about inequality in Russian society, the poverty of the peasants, and the uncompromising czarist regime. In the early 1880s, at the height of his success, Tolstoy renounced his literary past and the ideal of family life and began a period of spiritual and moral search. He wrote philosophical treatises in which he discussed life, art, and religion. Among them were such titles as Confession, What is my faith? And the kingdom of God is within you. In search of answers, Tolstoy turned to theology. He read religious treatises and communicated with monks from the legendary Optina Monastery. During these years, the writer studied Hebrew and ancient Greek in order to read Christian primary sources. He mixed with Jews, the old believers of the Russian Orthodox Church, and Muslims. The result of his spiritual search was his rejection of the comforts and benefits of the life of the wealthy. He became increasingly engaged in physical labor, worked often in the fields, became a vegetarian, wore simple clothes, and even renounced the copyrights on his works. He openly criticized most of the basic ideas of state and secular life of his time. Of course, this was reflected in his written works. Tolstoy's ideas gradually began to penetrate into the social life of Russia. From them, a new religious and ethical trend was formed. Tolstoyism. In September 1882, the Emperor Alexander III secretly placed Tolstoy under supervision and it became more difficult for him to publish his works. In 1899, Tolstoy wrote the novel Resurrection. In this work, the writer criticized the judicial system, the army, and the government. The contempt with which Tolstoy described the Orthodox Church provoked a response. In February 1901, the Holy Synod of Russia published a decree excommunicating Tolstoy from the church. 
This decision only increased Tolstoy's popularity and drew public attention to the writer's ideals and beliefs. Tolstoy's literary and social activities became known abroad. The writer was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in 1901, 1902, and 1910, and also nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature in the years 1902 through 1906. Tolstoy himself did not wish to receive the awards and even wrote letters of refusal. In the summer of 1909, one of the visitors to Yasnia Polyana expressed his delight and gratitude for the creation of War and Peace and Anna Karenina. Tolstoy replied, It is as if someone came to Edison and said, I respect you very much for dancing the mazurka well. He clearly thought that his other works were more important. The ascetic way of life became more and more fascinating to Tolstoy over the years. He was tired of the life of a landlord and considered it too luxurious. On November 13, 1910, he packed up and left his family and home without an exact travel plan. While traveling, Tolstoy fell ill with pneumonia. A few days later, he died in the house of the head of a small railway station south of his home. He was 82 years old. On the day of his burial, several thousand people came to Yasnia Polyana. This was the first public funeral in Russia that was not held according to the church rite. Tolstoy was buried in his native estate on the edge of the forest, where as a child he and his brother searched for the green wand that held the secret of how to make all people happy. Today, his Yasnia Polyana home is also a museum and is visited by thousands of people every year. Books of the great writer have sold millions of copies and are found in libraries all over the world. His works remain relevant as they help people to find answers to the most difficult questions of existence. <laughs>